Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Dungeon Drop. And in Dungeon Drop, you're basically going to drop a dungeon on a table. I'm serious, that's what you do. It plays two to four players, takes about 15 to 25 minutes to play the game, and is for ages, I would say, nine and up. In the game Dungeon Drop, you're basically going to create your own character. You could be a dark elf ranger, or maybe even a high elf cleric. You're also going to get a secret quest that will tell you the value of your jewels and gems, as well as any bonus additional scoring you can get. And then you're going to simply take a dungeon and drop it. These dungeons are going to be involved with a bunch of cubes. There's going to be pillars, there's going to be goblins and trolls and dragons and all sorts of things. After you've done that, each player is then going to have a turn. The turn is going to involve going into a bag, drawing out some cubes, dropping it onto the table, and then making a triangle. You make triangles out of pillars and score everything inside. You're going to take that into your tableau. After you've done that in a full round, you'll continue by selecting a new initiative, and the player who has the most things will end up going last, and in which case there's three rounds. After all three of the rounds are concluded, you're going to check all the stuff that you have, and if you have the most stuff worth the most currency or the most victory points, you're going to win the game. Just be careful though, because you only have a certain amount of health. And if you attack things too many times, like trolls and dragons and goblins, you're going to die. So be careful in there, you dungeon crawlers, down below on Dungeon Drop. So here you have all the components for Dungeon Drop, and uh, pretty much what you're going to get. This is the player aids. Every player is going to get one that plays the game, up to four players. You got quests here that will show you basically what the currency is worth, these different gems, and how you score them. Some of them will have specific numbers on them, as well as things like the gold scores double. And it tells you the dragon scores double, which means if you can get that dragon, you're going to win. Uh, additionally, there's characters here. You can have, like, the gear golem, and he's also a mage, or a fairy warrior, a half-elf archer, and all of them are going to have different abilities. Like this one here, you can flick a monster, or the bullseye, you can flick a non-villain cube, or a non-pillar cube. Uh, they basically gonna have you different dexterity aspects you can do in the game, and some of them will just give you certain bonuses. This one lets you flick a key or a chest. This one over here says you can redrop all cubes of one type in the dungeon. That's my favorite, personally. Uh, you're also going to get this turn mark order, so there's going to be one, two, three, and four for the number of players in the game, and then a ton of cubes. Let's go and go through all the different cubes in the game. The first cube, the main, main important cube, is the dragon cube. It's a big red one. He does damage. Then you got these little cubes over here, which are gems that have different values on them when you pick them up. Gold is simply worth one. These are goblins. They can hurt you. They'll do one damage to you if you pick them up. And this over here is called a key. Keys will open up chests, which I'll talk about in a second. And these, the most important cubes in the game, because these are the ones you need in order to gain these things, are called pillars. If you get three pillars, basically like this, uh, then you're going to make a triangle. So one, two, and three, and you can pick up everything inside the triangle that will be yours for your turn. That is how the pillars function. There are these little uh, die, which you're going to go ahead and drop, and when they drop, they'll have a certain number on them, and in order to get them and their value in points, you'll have to have a key. This over here is armor, and it can protect you from taking damage from dragons, which is very, very important. Dragons do damage. With armor, it protects you. Uh, but the trolls, however, are evil as well. They take minus two HP, and they function the same way as anything else in this game. All all of the big cubes are going to go into this bag here, and all of the little cubes are actually going to be dropped down on the board after you've selected your quest, your character, and your class, as well as taken your player aid. Let's go ahead and take it down below, and I'll show you how to play a round or two of Dungeon Drop. As you can see, each player has a quest, each player has a uh, class, and a race. So he's a high elf cleric, he's a half elk orc archer, he's got five initiative, and he's got nine, which means that he has the least uh, the least number, so he gets to be first, and he has the highest, so he goes second. Then you're going to take the rest of the player aids, classes, and races, as well as quests, and stuff on the side for another game. This player, you can go ahead and check and see, he only gets, it's a secret, he gets to know this. He's looking for pink, white, and then blue, and the dragon scores double for him. Whereas this player here, he can get three, two, and one based on the color, and if he has more than three health at the end of the game, he scores six points. The player aid is over here, it tells you what you need, but after the first game or so, you won't actually need that. This is the dungeon, it's going to include all the small cubes along with the big red dragon cube, and generally speaking, you're going to take all of the cubes, and you're going to drop them from about a foot up from the table. If they ever fall off the table for the beginning, you're probably just going to go ahead and put them back on again, but after that, whenever things fall off or go out of bounds, you're going to give it to the next player. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this and make kind of like a pretty looking dungeon here if I can. Okay, something like that, I guess. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and begin with the first player. Depending on the number of players in the game, we'll determine how many of these cubes you're going to pull out of the bag. And you're always going to have three rounds. So if in a two-player game, I believe it's six of these cubes. So four, five, and six. And you're going to go ahead and take these, drop them as well. 
And then after that, you're going to go ahead and begin. So this player here is going to get to select one of his two abilities. And he's going to go ahead and select this one here. Redrop any cubes of any type. So he's going to choose green. And he's going to go ahead and redrop all those cubes. A nice little dexterity action for the game. And then after that, he's going to go ahead and select pillars to make a triangle. And you want to try and select as many cubes as you possibly can inside that triangle. So for instance, a triangle would be this, this, and this. And he can go ahead and take everything inside. But remember, anything that touches is going to count. So in this case, you'd be careful because that dragon will count and it'll do a total of 10 damage, which will kill you. So <laughs> don't want to pick that one maybe. But he could go ahead and select this one here. And I think that's what he's going to do. He's going to select this one here, which will hit all of these because they're all within the cube range. And he gets to put them down next to his quest. That's in his tableau. That will count for the end of the game. Scoring one gold, two of these different colors, and then a key, which will hopefully give him a chest. The next player is then going to get a chance to go. And he's going to go ahead and take six cubes from the bag here. One, two, three, four, six. Perfect. And he's going to go ahead and drop them down. And then after that, he's going to get a chance to do one of his abilities. He'll go ahead and flick a monster. Boop. And then he's going to go ahead and select to uh, get a triangle. Let's see if he can find one that's really good. This one's really good. That'll give him a lot of stuff. Uh, so he'll do that. So this one will get him these guys here. Get him this, 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 and this. Uh, but the cost of 2 HP. So remember, he doesn't want to go... Uh, lower than uh, 3 HP. So he's got 3 right now. So he has to not take any more damage for the rest of the game, but he gets all of this currency, which is very, very good. And the game's going to rinse and repeat. The next player is going to get a chance to go, but it's going to be based on a uh, turn order, first of all. So in this case, he's got the most stuff, so he's going to go second, and he has the least stuff, so he'll go first. If it's ever a tie, you go ahead and go ahead and look at the, the numbers based on initiative. And then, once again, rinse and repeat. You're going to go ahead and take these cubes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, drop them down to the dungeon, and and then go ahead and form pillars. And uh, the only thing I want to talk about after that, I think so after the three rounds, I think you get the basic idea of the game, is these guys here. You need to have one of these in your tableau in order to unlock the chest at the end of the game. It's going to be based on the number that gets rolled, and you can score points for these. So these can give you big points or very, very little points. These guys are going to do damage to you, and if you ever go to a certain point, you can die. So you got to be very careful about that. And remember, you can always choose either of your abilities when performing after dropping before making a pillar. That's the basic idea of the game Dungeon Drop. I think you get an idea of this little crazy dungeon crawling game. Let's go ahead and come up and I'll tell you what I think about it. So Dungeon Drop is a dexterity dungeon crawl, right? You're basically going to be dropping things on the table, forming triangles, and gaining as much as you possibly can without taking too much damage. It's very, very important that you do so because if you do, you die. And just like any normal dungeon crawler, dying is not a very good thing. Remember, you want to score points, and your quest is the most important thing in the game, just like any other good and true dungeon crawler. So in this case, this guy is definitely going to get the dragon. He's definitely going to want to get as many of these pink ones as possible and avoid the blue ones but they still do give him points. Another thing to note too is if you have a chest, but you don't have a key, you don't get the points for the chest. So just as an FYI, and gold are always worth one point unless your quest dictates otherwise. This game does exactly what it sets out to do. You're basically playing a dexterity game that's very quick and has the great feel of a dungeon crawler, all mixed in and simplified into one singular little time slot of about 25 to 30 minutes. I really, really enjoyed this game. We played it live, we had a lot of fun with it. Uh, it's very, very simplistic in nature, but does have strategy to it. There's gonna be your different abilities on all the different cards that will do different things. Like like I said before, the redropping all the cubes is a lot of fun for me. Explore one cube, then return it to the box, and you may flick a cube of this type. So that's pretty useful. There's a bunch of other characters as well, Let's go ahead and talk about a couple of them first before we get into more of the review. There's a ranger that lets you scavenge. You can count one cube outside the dungeon boundary as a pillar. Wow, useful, right? Lockpick, flick one key or chest. It allows you to get maybe both if you want during a single turn. Explore a cube, then return it to the box. You may count a cube of the same color as a pillar. Wow, that's useful. And so on and so forth. There's a lot of different character choices in this game, and all of them feel different, and they also can combine into different types. You can have a half-orc uh, mage or a half-elf or archer so on and so forth and it has some interesting little applications because depending on how the board is set up and how people are dropping things is going to depend on what ability you want to use also hoping players drop things off off the board is always a good thing or out of bounds because it's going to allow you to basically gain all of those cubes to drop in addition to the cubes you're normally going to get to drop the larger the player of the game 
uh, larger players, a larger amount of players in the game, the less cubes you drop per round, but the more things that occur. This game's got some craziness. It's got a lot of fun to it. It's very, very simple. Overall, very, very enjoyable. For those of you looking for a very deep strategy dungeon crawl, it's dungeon drops not for you. But for those of you who are interested in just a quick bit of fun, a game that's a filler that you might want to play more than once, because definitely I did. We played this multiple times in one day, and we played this live on stream, which you can go ahead and take a look down below. I'll post it in the face in uh, post it from our face. Facebook in the description. You can watch us play it live and see what you think. Personally, I thought everyone had a great time and I think it de definitely fits in with the exact theme that it wants. It fits in with exactly what it's trying to do. And if you really enjoy games that have dexterity and just plain fun, Dungeon Drop's going to be there for you. Really, really, really enjoy this game. Definitely check it out down below in the description currently on Kickstarter Dungeon Drop. Excellent little game. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, go and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It helps. It does keep us going, and it keeps us making more content for you guys, as well as taking a look at Dungeon Drop, the game in which you're dropping a dungeon down, you're crawling through it using pillars and rooms, and trying to collect as much treasure as you can by avoiding all of those goblins, trolls, and dragons. Don't forget to also check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We have tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more, as well as our live streams every Wednesday at 7 30 p.m. PST we do it uh at our Unfiltered Gamer Facebook page. We're giving away a ton of great games there as well as on our website as well. If you like winning games, it's a great way to do so and you're pretty, you have a pretty high likelihood of winning games in comparison to anywhere else. Also, check out our friends at everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek. They tune to a ton of great games and a ton of great giveaways as well. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I look forward to dropping some dungeons on you next time.